picked um, Pablo Rubenstein as my favourite scientist and he's the godfather of cord blood banking. Well we're actually in a cord blood bank um, at the moment and it's called the Anthony Nolan Cell Therapy Centre and it was actually opened in 2008. Um, so what we do here is we get the cord blood from mothers um, who have consented and we process the units for clinical and research use. So the clinical units can in the future be used um, for transplantation for patients who are suffering from various blood diseases. blood that's retrieved from the mother's cord is actually really high in stem cells so it's them stem cells that are actually used um, in place of a bone marrow transplant um, stem cell transplant can be used so Pablo actually was involved in the first cord blood transplant in 1988 and he set up the first cord blood bank in the world his cord blood bank is actually located in New York and he currently has over 60,000 cord blood units that he's processed. And it's just amazing how he's actually done that. A waste product that actually can save lives is just an amazing thing that he's actually done and brought to the rest of the world. Basically the midwives actually obtain consent from the mothers before they actually go into labour. Uh, once they've actually obtained consent they can take the cord from the mother and the placenta and they can actually extract the cord bud from there and then they put it into a Griffles bag and then they actually send that to us. So I'm a lab scientist here and um, I work in two areas. I work in the quality control lab upstairs and I work in the processing lab, which is this one here. And um, basically when the cord blood actually arrives in the morning, um, I'm actually in charge of actually processing the units. Basically someone will actually request a cord blood and they'll actually send us the HLA typing for that patient. And then based on our database, we'll check the HLA typing and then pick a cord blood that's actually appropriate for that patient. As soon as that's done, we can actually send the cord blood out in a cryo shipper, which contains nitrogen in it to keep it at the required temperature. And we can send that anywhere across the world as well. At the moment, there's over 80 different diseases that's actually been used for. And one of the main ones is actually leukemia, but it can be other disorders such as sickle cell anemia as well. So I had the opportunity of meeting Pablo Rubenstein when he came to visit us here earlier on this year. Um, he's a great guy, really knowledgeable and really humble and um, he's taught us so much about cord blood banking and I know that we're going to be learning a whole lot more from him. Well we all went crazy and started cleaning up the lab, just like getting everything ready. We wanted everything to be absolutely perfect when he came. To be honest I think I was a little bit nervous when he came because I didn't want to like mess up and like you know act like a fool or anything. It's really hard to explain his character because he's so calm and just down to earth and he's just like a really mellow kind of guy. Well he's brought this whole concept to everyone in the world of using cord blood, bank, cord blood to actually transplant to patients and in fact they've actually used it to treat over 80 different diseases and it's really important that everyone understands that. I mean he's not the average household name that everyone knows like Einstein which is a shame because he's a great guy and he's brought so much to us and educated us so much. But yeah I mean ho hope in time to come that people actually realise a bit more about cord blood banking and understand that he actually brought it to us. Mm -hmm.